Welcome to Making Sense once again. So glad to have you with us. Um, if you're new from to the conversation, Making Sense is what we do every Friday at 2 p.m. And we're here to continue building a financially empowered community. So Making Sense has been built on the principles of the book that I wrote called Making Sense. And we feel that the principles that are in this book are so important that it takes more than just the book to flesh them out. And this is why we are having that, those kind of conversations. Uh, it's about money and the topic of money is why. So welcome everybody. Uh, for those who are tuning in and have been following us for the last four weeks, welcome back. For those who are new, welcome to our community. Please let us know where you are tuning in from and looking forward to a great hour together. Once again with me is my friend, my colleague, my co-host, uh, fellow entrepreneur, Cheba, welcome. Hi, hi Washeke, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you today <laughs> afternoon? I'm good, I'm good, just getting used to the, I think this is the season, the season for the chilly, a bit chilly and a bit yes, rainy. Yes, yes. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, during boarding school, like the second term. Yes. This used to be the proper weather back in the day. Oh, yes, it did. It did. And today yeah. is a bit, it's a bit chilly. It is. I can uh, see you're all warm up. As I'm, well. I'm, I'm all warm. Uh, <laughs> it's almost raining where I am. Yeah. So everybody else, I hope apart from staying safe, you're also staying warm, whether you're tuning in from your house, whether you're tuning in from an office, if you had to go to work and wherever you are, we're just so happy to have you in the conversation. Sheba okay. is also the head of training and communications at Centonomy for those who have not met her before and uh, is also an entrepreneur in her own right. And hence the this conversation that we're having today is about money for entrepreneurs, because mm. I know entrepreneurs, we, we have a different relationship with money. We have to deal, especially now, I think if you're out there and you're in business and you can hear what and relate to what I'm saying, it's just one of those seasons where you're like, what do I do? What's the way forward? But as I was looking and evaluating this season, I also realized this is not the first time this has happened to a lot of us. Of course, it's the first time it's COVID, but it's not the first time of challenges with money or being forced to look at money. So whether you're an entrepreneur who's starting, some of you are thinking, how do I start a business? Whether you're an entrepreneur who's in business and in some way has been disrupted, whether you're in a business that you've, you're seeing the opportunity forward, money continues to be this thing we continue having to have a different relationship with. Mm. And in, uh, in my book, Making Sense, I talk about the 200 Bob experience that changed my life. Mm. So I started business and I thought that, um, you know, you start business and you think, ah, in a month, two months, clients will be, be knocking up and the running. Door. I'll be up and running. In fact, I'll also be able to tell my friends how I'm doing well and go and meet them at the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. And I had also, my first business had also stopped. So I was also feeling like a failure because I was in this midway of transition. And I went to the ATM and for a long time, you're avoiding, I'm avoiding looking at that balance. So if you're out there and you've gone to the ATM before and when the receipt, when the ATM asks, do you want a receipt? You press no, please know you're in safe hands because that you're is not exactly alone. You're not alone. <laughs> and that denial and, and I think more than anything, not wanting to deal with what, what I was feeling about the hardship of the, mm -hmm. the financial challenges led me to 200 Bob in the ATM. And I could no longer lie because I tried to withdraw it. Please not have started a business that is about advising people about money. So you can mm -hmm. imagine the internal struggle I am going through. Um, and I couldn't withdraw it. I tried. And I, I think that for me was when I really, really, really had to come to terms with what is my relationship as a business person with money. Mm -hmm. And I think today's conversation is not just about people who are in business. If you're here and there's a hardship with money, a lot of us who have tuned in may have lost jobs or incomes may have been slashed. And you're trying to figure out how do I navigate this? The first relationship we need to accept with money is being able to relate with money even when we don't have it. 
so I have in my 11 year journey in Central, actually 13 years as an entrepreneur, I've had to deal with not being able to pay people on time and having to go and face them and explain that and feel the shame of it. Uh, not being able to pay rent. And when I say rent, I mean both office premises and household rent, yeah? And feeling like, oh my goodness, is what I am doing a sham? Worthless. Is it fake? Am I an imposter? Is yeah? it worthless? You know, all the, all the hours, the sleepless all nights. The hours. Do I really share, but do I really have something to offer other people, yet yeah. I can't pay my rent? I yeah. can relate to that. Um, I'm not able to join others as they're doing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I think when I entered business, a lot of my uh, colleagues, former colleagues or friends were in places where they were earning a salary and they're like, let's go here, let's go here, let's do this. Yeah. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, suddenly I know 500 shillings, how many vegetables and fruits it buys because that's suddenly how I have to think. Mm -hmm. it's the credit card is maxed out constantly between buying food and then there's also buying photocopy photocopying manuals for the for for the, for training people so and you're maxing out the credit card on both ends mm -hmm. and you're like where does this end and i think i've been talking to a lot of business people especially in this season mm -hmm. and sheba we are carrying shame yeah. we feel like failures yeah the business hasn't met our expectations at all um, we have the fear of not having, um, we are dealing with past beliefs and experiences and we're, and in our minds, our, our minds are playing with them thinking we're going to go back to that. Mm. Um, and it's so easy to, to spend your entrepreneurship journey. If you don't accept that there's a relationship with, that comes with not having money, it's so easy to, to, to spend your business journey running away from the fear of what it is we have gone through before or what it is we are actually facing now Sheba you've been in business and I know you also have experiences with this so maybe you want to tell us something about that yeah. like yeah. Washake you're speaking and I am even just asking myself do you want to tell me there are quite a number the reality is there are quite so many of us who have been in situations like this or who are in situations like this yeah. let me talk about shame yes um i so as you as you've been aware i've run i started an events business in 2013 yes that was officially in the june of 2013 and yeah you know, a lot of challenges, but then again, you know, projects management is something that I really enjoy. So by the way, I don't know if yeah. I've mentioned this, by the time I was starting the business, and it's good that we are talking about money relationships, by the time money and our relationship yes. with money, because by the time I was starting the business, Washeke, what I needed to do was start saving myself because I was now depleting my savings. Yes, so I had yes. just come from, from doing some work, um, a program in, in Norway. And, yeah. you know, thankfully we used to have, so the allowance wasn't really bad and I had really saved a lot. And yeah. by the time I came back, I knew immediately i knew i'm coming back i'm gonna send some of those cvs and i'm gonna get a role in one of these really exciting ngos or companies but as i know i've told you this before i started now realizing that it's been three months yes, four months yes, five yes. months i've not yet gotten a job and yes. i started asking myself in the meantime as i'm searching for a job what can i be doing in the meantime yes. and i sat down something we usually talk about and even you've talked about in the in the making sense book about your non-financial assets sat yeah. down mapped out my skills I realize I know how to, to bring, to work on projects, bring them to yes. life, plan yes. them from beginning to end. And that's how I got into the event space. Yeah. And so wow. it started out with very little shillings, I can tell you. And, wow. and then over the years, it has been evolving into a marketing agency. Now, quick 
uh, quick forward to shame and dealing yeah. with shame. You know, there are times in the business, things are good. Clients mm. are coming on board. Your proposals are selling. Sometimes they may be not selling immediately, but at least they're even giving you calls. Now, I, I remember I used to be known as Shebawa Tens, Shebawa mm, Events. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. But then it reached a point in my business where we we we, we did a project, actually two or three, two projects. And yeah. unfortunately, the business got into a lot of debt mm. and just the, first of all that was shame right there because mm. I'd already done centronomy 101 at that time oh okay I I wasn't getting into personal debt you know the one yeah. we, we were talking about last week this was business debt, but I I had covered it I had taken it from a personal point of view because my business could not really afford credit and then now the shame of struggling, dealing with suppliers. We had done a project that was not fruitful. Money was tight. Sometimes I really could not meet rent. Mm. I would be left to borrow. And then out here, people are seeing Sheba. You know, they're like, oh my God, she's running a good business. Looked at, look at the LinkedIn profile. Many times yes. they're even coming for, it doesn't mean that I cannot help. It doesn't mean yeah. that I'm valueless. Yes, but yes. is that feeling sometimes your business can bring you to your knees, yes. especially when you're not making money, yes, and yes. especially when you are the only one who knows, yes, that you're not making as much as others think that you should or you think. And shame was a real thing that um I have had to battle over the last couple of years, but then until one day I realized who's what. What's, what's my why in this business? I remember mm. in the beginning, it's, it was for me to meet my expenses. Then I started finding myself and my mission and my purpose. And as soon as I slowly started separating my feelings, my desires, my actions from my money, I started to experience a bit of freedom. But yeah. honestly, shame has been a real issue um, yeah. because I'm like, I've worked for seven years in yeah. this business. Yeah, I don't have so much. You know, it can yeah. it can really be scary sometimes. Mm. Yeah, Th thank you so much, Sheba. I can totally relate to that thing of having to find a bigger why. Yeah. asking yourself questions, wanting to quit. Everybody gets to a quitting point. And if you're, if you're listening or watching this and you can relate to that shame that you're feeling, that feeling like a failure, that self-condemnation, because even, even before we get to the other practical side of money, what is holding us down is things sometimes we cannot even tell anybody else or there's nobody around you who actually understands. And I felt it and I felt it because while still I was in that investment industry, my professional life had been in an investment industry, buying and Imagine. selling shares and making money for other people. So how can I be in this, in this situation? And I guess for all of us, it's, it's to start understanding what is the lesson here for all of us first of all let's let's understand corona is none no one could have anticipated no one could have expected it no one but we are here what is this teaching us and i think every time i've gone through a challenge financial or otherwise it has taught me something and especially with the money challenges um that even sheba you're talking about that i can i've gone through that in fact i thought it's like you were talking to me yeah <laughs> First of all, I learned that the weakness of a purely financial motive, you talked about that, yeah, where you're like, yes, you want to survive, you want to make money, but sometimes this almost sheds light. It molikas us on saying money cannot be the only reason we are doing business. In I'm not fact, saying it's not money, sustainable. It's not sustainable. I'm not saying money is not important. Money, in fact, is a tool. And in the book, I've talked about money being a tool. And we have to learn how to navigate that too. But I guess this life of I'm going to be successful to impress others, we are being caught out on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in the book, in Making Sense, I also talk about when sometimes when we are just doing money for survival, we are giving money a job description it was never meant to have. Money was never meant to be the definition of who you are and what you can do. Yeah. Mm. Uh, shame is keeping us from asking help from the right people, the right people. Yeah. I remember when I was in business, I had to take a, a, a loan of 500,000 shillings from my mother. And I felt ashamed because I was like, my parents have educated me. 
they have uh, taken me through school and here I am back to ask for 500,000 shillings. And it was hard. She gave me, but it was, it was hard, yeah? But it was important to be able to tell people and to tell my parents, this is what I'm going through and this is what I need, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, and even that time, it's things like even help just to pay your rent, yeah? yeah? I learned that it's okay to do other things as you figure money out. Please don't be snobbish about it, yeah? I don't like to do accounting, but I... I studied accounting and as I was, as, even as much as I knew I wanted centronomy, help people plan money, I did take some work along the way to do accounting, mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't enjoy it, it was definitely not my dream, but it's okay to also say this is what I have to do to put food on the table, it doesn't mean you have given up on your dream, it just mm-hmm. means you're being practical with what do I do for daily, what's the right. daily, what do I do for survival, even as I continue engaging with my dream Mm -hmm. I I needed to learn and I want anybody listening to this I want to say it's okay not to be able to afford stuff it's okay I'm not saying you don't have a plan or you won't work towards it but it's okay if you can't pay rent it's okay that you can't afford it it's not that you won't figure out how to what you need to pay rent but don't condemn yourself you've heard what Sheba was saying and I was saying it's a lot about what's going on in our own heads about not having money Mm -hmm. us telling ourselves we are not good enough you have failed other people what will my parents think and sometimes who am i who am i you know there was this question of like you know um i like i really love what you just said um with the analogy of asking yourself you know, do not be yeah. ashamed to take a couple of things or to do a couple of things yeah. to enable you to get to where you're going. Do you know, Asheke, as I was r- running my business during those years, I don't know if you remember, but yes. I know Centronomy has been a part, uh, key part of my heart, yes. but I became an alumnus of Centronomy. And then one day in my inbox, I received an email saying, hi, alumni, if you'd be interested in being a trainer, you know, there's an opportunity to um, apply. And I realized, you know what, this could be one of the things that I could do to continue supporting me in my journey, number one, not only as a passion point, but even as a source of income. Absolutely. And, And the way you have described it is like you're not, there's a river and there's a place you want to get there yes. and then there are some of these stones you need to step no, abs- on stepping yes. stones to get yes. to where you're going and yeah. that was what like coaching and training has been for me like yeah. that one thing that I can do to continue supplementing my income because yes. sometimes uh, business people or entrepreneurs limit themselves they suffer so much suffering on one thing and the responsibility we give money is way too huge too, it's way too huge the way we make it define Shepa, in my life i have washed dishes yeah as i was studying i for my master's degree i washed dishes it didn't mean that that is what i was aiming to be but it's what i had to do to to survive i have worked in factories so i think anytime we say we, we are too good or our title or we've started defining ourselves so in a certain way that we don't see the obvious solution to make us be able to survive day to day it is a problem because that comes to bite us later on. We may build businesses, like people have built businesses, but for a lot of us, we are now being told, yes, you have built businesses, but we need to go back to the basics and we need to go back to survival. And if that's where you are, it's okay because in striving to win a war, you are going to lose some battles, yeah? yeah? But it doesn't mean you're not going to win the war. It just means that there are some battles that... Whatever, even if you're like, okay, this is what has, because some businesses have completely stopped. Even if you're like, okay, I'm parking that for now, but so that my child can eat, I can eat, I can go to school. I have seen a gap with mandazis, providing mandazis for the rare. Let's not think we are so good, yeah. yeah, or so entitled that we cannot make mandazis. And sometimes in doing these other sm- things that we think are smaller, it is where you're going to find the, the answer to how you're going to win the war. Mm-hmm. It does not define you. And it's time we stop letting what society has made us believe or other people define, because that's a lot of us, a reasons a lot of us can't find 
the obvious solution. I started writing articles, Sherpa, just like you. I start, also started writing articles. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know what it would lead to. Yeah. But I was like, oh, two Gs. Oh, article, two Gs. Oh, I'm in it because I know what two Gs can do. And remember, a tree is still, I, I saw this in a, in, a, in a speech somewhere. So let me, let me be clear. I, I saw it from somebody else. Yeah. yeah. It was actually Julian Kula on Facebook who was saying this. A tree is still a tree. It just goes through different seasons. So sometimes the tree is in season, it's, the leaves are green and it's flowering, it's beautiful. There are some seasons the tree is withered, yeah? But the tree is still a tree. So understand you are still a tree. No matter what your business is going through, you are still a tree. You may be going through a season, some businesses have thrived in this season where you're flowering, yeah? But this may be the season where you've dried up, the leaves have dried up a, mm, a bit. Some are falling off. Some are falling off and yeah. maybe the fruit needs to be different in the next yeah. season. Yeah. But you are still a tree. When you keep beating yourself down, you won't see the next, the next way, the next mm. leaf, the next fruit, the next lesson, it will cloud you. It, so it stops yeah. stimulating creativity as well. Yes. And I want to speak, you know, you're speaking like this and Judy Wamaiva is telling yeah. us, thank you everybody who've joined us. Judy is saying that moment of shame is, yeah. what, um, is what I'm going through currently. I have moved to my parents' house yeah. as my business at the moment cannot meet my expenses. I have closed the office working. I'm now working from my parents' house through though business is low. And you know what, Judy, it reached a point, um, I think it was about 2016 for me, uh, 2016 and a bit of 2017. They're just yeah. the same way Washake is saying, yeah. I had to seek help to pay rent. Yeah, yeah. All right. And it was like, oh my God, you know, and by the clients are still coming. And, and one day, you know, I hope Washake will get to demystify just because the business is making money, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean yeah. that you need to be able to meet all your expenses. Sometimes yeah. money is coming in, it's covering certain types yes. of expenses, and you may not get everything. And it's okay, it's part of the tree growing. Yes, it's part yes. of the tree growing. Yes. And, yes. and the thing is to keep on pushing. But if you keep focusing so much on what you cannot control, you yes. know the yeah. shame part the, if you keep focusing on that you lack stimulation for creativity yeah. mm. and judy i just want to tell you well done because i think acceptance of what is 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 also very important so well done for taking that move for now and the moves you have to do for a while are not forever that for a while the the, the the intelligent thing to do was to move to your parents' house. Because I know there are a lot of people and others who may be finding themselves in the same situation where they're like, my pride is not going to let me do that. Mm -hmm. So there's some people even today, and I've been talking to people and they're even thinking of borrowing in this season mm -hmm. to sustain an image. Yeah, mm -hmm. instead of saying my reality is this and this is what I need to do. So well done, Judy. And yes, the business may be slow, but I think this time also gives us, and you have had to shut your office, but this time also gives us a way, you are a tree. What does the fruit look like for the next season? Yeah, it gives us time to that. So acceptance is so important. And I'm so glad, Judy, you talked about it. Wishing it wasn't and resenting the fact that what is, is, is a waste of energy. And I think what we need to start thinking about is what do you do with what is happening? And this relates, to, even though you've not yet started a business, if you're here and you've lost a job or have slashed your income, these principles we're talking about are across the board. Because even as we called this topic money for entrepreneurs, I think we're all being pushed to an entrepreneurial approach with money, whichever mm -hmm. way it is. So I think when you do accept, you start seeing opportunities and you start, you start not defining yourself because of money. And I remember my initial financial planning clients. And I remember this particular meeting so well. It was at Lavington Kengeles. I didn't have money yet. I need, I have, I'm going to do somebody's financial plan for them. And I hope mm. all of you listening can listen to the irony of my situation. Me in particular, because I'm, I'm, my dream is a business that empowers people about money. And I am the person who had 
200 bob in the ATM, yeah? But I went and even going, I'm looking at the car, I'm wondering, does the E in the car mean one kilometer, three kilometers? <laughs> How far can How I far can it car? go? How far can it go? And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> can the client please pay me in cash? Because if they don't give me that 3K in cash, if you give me a check, that car is You sleeping. leave the car there. They leave the, yeah, leave the, the car park. But I went for the session. And once we started talking, I removed, my mind shifted from my problem to what I could do for this client. And I think that's why having a business that solves a problem does more for you than just your bank account. Mm -hmm. Because yes, I went there so insecure, Sheba, because I'm like, if this client asks me about my portfolio, I'm sunk because it's 200 bob that cannot be withdrawn, yeah? Mm -hmm. But once we started the conversation and I shifted into gear, and I want to tell all of you here, no matter what you're going through, there's a gear that was designed for you that overcomes anything else that you could ever think about. So once I shifted into gear and started speaking the conversation of money, the conversation of empowerment to this client who had millions, by the way, mm. I started seeing myself differently. My bank account hasn't changed, but I started seeing myself differently. So what you have today and where you are going have nothing to do with each other. It's, it's our minds that tell us, oh, I only have 10,000 shillings, so this is what I can do. Mm. You only have 10,000 shillings, you're right, so you can't go on a holiday today, but your mind, your ability, your skill, your gifts will first go ahead of your bank account. Oh, yeah. Your job is to use them because finance, true financial freedom comes from there. I can, there are lots of people with, who are billionaires, but they are, they are stuck. They're not financially free because the first financial freedom happens in our minds when you don't define yourself because of the money that you have. When you're able to separate what you can do versus what is in the bank account. So I really hope I'm talking to some people here today. Shelba. I think you are. Yeah? I think you are. I think you are. And I would like to, just to highlight just one thing that you've cha you've said that is yeah. very critical is that right now one of the things I'm calling it my hibernation season. That's yeah. really what it is, you know. Yeah. Um what this hibernation season is reminding me that in everything that I need to do, I need to apply that entrepreneurial approach. Yes. That approach of looking at the problem and seeing, asking myself, what could be the solution? What could be the other way? What could be the gap? What yeah. could be those stepping stones? And how can I place myself in on that, you know, towards that problem? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel I feel that hibernation. Me had called it cave. What I've been yeah. telling my friends, I'm in cave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in cave yeah. mode at, the, at mm. the moment. And I think why, guys, if you're out there, you can relate to this, please continue putting your comments because I also understand we don't get to hear conversations like this. Yeah. When I started as an entrepreneur, the only thing that was out there were entrepreneurs are for, and in the centronomy entrepreneur class the first class is called entrepreneur mindset we talk mm. about these things because mm. island entrepreneurs are focused fearless determined have got it together can never raise give up. money never give up all yo. the time yo that is not human yeah not, i'm like who are these entrepreneurs and why am i not in this class? exactly <laughs> so you could be like and and if you're out there and i've been feeling this season, there's a lot of people also talking. And even me, I've done that talk of reinvent yourself, mm -hmm. adapt. But sometimes let's understand the adapting is also in figuring out, in just surviving mentally, even in the period that's adapting in itself. So let's not be ashamed of, let's have more. And that's why we're having this kind of conversations of making sense at the other platforms of Centronomy to bring reality back. Because what I saw when I was starting out as an entrepreneur, I felt I had nobody to talk to. Yeah, I felt it was just me. And I want to tell you, not everybody is going through your season in the same time you are going through, but somebody has gone through. What you are going through is not, for lack of a better word, not special to you. Mm -hmm. It's just that people don't talk about it. And all we want to talk about is, oh, my vision and strategy were so great. And this is what I've achieved in business. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, and it has led a lot of people to give up. And we're in a season where we don't need entrepreneurs giving up. We yeah. don't need you giving up. 
Mm. Yeah, all of you have joined. We don't need you giving up. And I think it's understanding that there's nothing wrong with you. Specifically now, there's nothing you could have done about coronavirus. Mm. But it's also a season sometimes to say, what didn't I understand that I should have understood about money in my business, yeah? Mm. So I want to just show you a very simple illustration. So I'm just going to switch and share my screen. Okay. Uh, very simple. And I'm just gonna do it through the illustration of a chair, mm -hmm. yeah? Your money in your business. So we're now looking at what, what didn't I understand or could have done better. Uh, if you've made a mistake, it's okay. Or you're in a business that's still going on. Yeah, still whatever. And sometimes these concepts, we are not clear about what they mean. In the Centonomy Entrepreneur Program, I think we have five modules dedicated to money because we know it's such an important part of understanding the money movement in your business. Mm. So let's say you make chairs, yeah? And you make your chair and you sell that chair for 5,000 shillings, yeah? Your revenue is 5,000 shillings. You have not made 5,000 shillings. The client has paid you 5,000 shillings, but there were expenses. So there, that is what is called revenue, yeah? So revenue is not what you can take to the, you, can, you can't sell a chair for 5,000 shillings and then go and spend the 5,000 shillings. Mm. But in making that chair, you had to pay a fundi and you had to buy the wood, yeah? So let's say that cost you 3,000 shillings. Your profit is the, the reality of what you have made in the business, yeah? So if I sold the chair for 5,000 shillings, my expenses were 3,000 shillings, it means my profit is 2,000 shillings. That is what is called profit. Why is profit important? We have to stop running businesses where we just survive. It's, it's chaotic. It's unstructured. You're it's eating. not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And I know I'm saying that word a lot, but it's true. Yeah, it's not, mm. it's not sustainable. So we have to start thinking profitably. We don't run profitable business a lot of the time because we don't think profitably. And thinking mm. profitably is starting to be conscious about the 2,000 shillings. So it will lead you to questions like, am I pricing the chair right? Yeah, was my efforts in making the chair, is it 2,000 shillings worth? Or do I, in order to make profits of 5,000 shillings, do I need to, to price the chair at 10,000 shillings? It leads us to ask questions like, do I need to sell more chairs and how many more chairs? And if I need to sell more chairs, what's the best use of you as the entrepreneur? What's the best use of your time? Is it in making the chairs or in selling the chairs? So in that case, you need to get somebody else to sell the, to make the chairs so you can spend more time going and closing the deals that get thousands of chairs sold, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's thinking profitably. And we want to encourage you after what we've gone through together as a business community, let's not go back to just, yes, we are surviving and we're trying to figure out survival, but let our minds be moving forward into how to run profitable business. So profit is important. Another important thing is cash flow. Cash flow. And many of us are, this is where, where we have struggled with. I could have sold the chair for 5,000 shillings, but when am I collecting the money? And before mm. I collect the money, I have had to pay my fundi, I've had to pay for the wood. If I've had to pay that 3,000 shillings before the client pays me 5,000 shillings, how am I funding it? Yeah. So there's profit, but there's also at what time do I need cash to cover expenses required to keep the business, the business running? So these are the four money principles that you need in your business. I've explained them very simply, but of course I know people are not in businesses where they aim to sell one chair. It's a hundred chairs. You could be a graphic designer. Same concept applies. Your expenses, are, you get paid when you deliver the, the, the graphics, the flyers, the websites, whatever it is. But mm -hmm. your expenses are you used your phone, you used your fuel to go for a client visit and it's your time. You sat there designing something. That is still an expense, yeah? yeah? If you have an office, that is still an expense. So profit is after and you have got to figure out how do I 
fund. So when a client tells you I'm paying you after 30 days, after 60 days, you have to figure out does that work or can I find a clever way of encouraging people to pay me earlier? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I like uh, I like this conversation very much. What you're just saying is that we need to be as we run businesses, as we think of starting, because I know that there are a couple of people who are also thinking about this, just yeah. being very present yeah. in the money part of your business, in how yes. money moves in your business. And yeah. being very honest is a very important aspect. And, you know, I like this point a lot because honestly, Washeke, for me, when I started um, my business, the one that I ended up, I've started a couple, some didn't yes. work. Yes, <laughs> but yes, the one yes. that actually worked yeah. by the time you talk about the chair and it's interestingly I used to rent out chairs and tents and things like that I cannot explain to you whether I really sat down to break down the cost by the time I said the chair uh, higher cost is 30 shillings I never yes. did the math yes. and I, I now realize and I later came to realize every time I used to complain, oh my God, we're not reaching break even, we are not making yeah. money, things yeah. are coming in, being taken for hire and all yeah. that, but I'm not seeing it reflecting in my life. It's really because at that point in time, I had really not focused on the money mm. movement in my business. Mm. Um, I also like the conversations that are coming in. Yeah. Uh, Faith is saying, is it possible to have a clear outline for a business financial plan? Also, let us know about paying salaries in a business and especially for the owner, Washeke will be talking a bit okay. about that. Yeah. I can see Steve Nate Breer. I know he's in the real estate business. He says yeah. this COVID season has just brought the realization that it doesn't matter where your business is. There's a need for a total rethink on how to handle money. Very true. Yeah. yeah. Mitsa Elengo says, until you hit rock bottom, you'll never know the way up. You know, yeah. and that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us, Nemo and Lydia from UAE and yeah. also Ellen. Yes, we are no longer in Nairobi only. We are all yes, over. Yes, we, yeah, we are all over and our classes, in case you didn't know, Centronomy classes are online. The Centronomy yeah. Entrepreneurship Program is also online. And I think the, the, the comment by, I think someone said, is okay. it business financial plan is why we have five classes in the Centronomy mm -hmm. Entrepreneur for this. But yeah. you're right, it's, we have to plan money, yeah? Uh, because also what has happened now, and let's talk about the, some of the lessons yeah, that when you don't approach things profitably or you're not conscious of your cash flow, mm. you then don't keep money because it's always going mm. and being spent. Because if I just if I take the five thousand shillings as money made without understanding I had costs or implications of when I told the client to pay or allowing the client to pay later, yet I can't afford it, I find myself in this rat race, a business rat race. Yes. Yeah, where I work hard, I earn money, I, I beat expenses. Then I convince myself it's working hard that will solve the problem. So I one work day. harder. One yeah. day, one day, yeah? When you I get a money. deal, I'll get a deal that just drops millions, yeah? So I work hard again. I earn more money. Then I meet more expenses and my expenses are going up because I needed more fundies in the house because I've not separated myself from money, from the business. Even in my house, my expenses are going up. I'm just drawing from the same account. So I still, I keep figuring out. So, and we go back to what we we're talking about in the beginning. Something is wrong with me for not getting yeah. it together. So I work harder. Then I burn out. Yeah? yeah. And I just want to emphasize something I said earlier. When you start thinking profitably, and, and um, I think somebody said it, that this season is a total rethink on how to handle yes. money. Just, just not about money, but even our role in our own businesses. If that's the cycle you've been in, apart from money, what you also have to think is, what is the best use of my effort? Me, yeah? Is it making the chair? So a lot of us, it's I'm the graphic designer, I'm the messenger, I'm making the chair, I'm dealing I'm with all suppliers, I'm the salesperson, I'm the one I'm the, the client accountant. Wants. I sell the car. The yeah. debt collector. The debt collector. Is that the best use of my time or does that keep me in the rat race? And do I need to make the bold decision of starting to get other people, even if I start with one person, yeah? 
other people who can do some of these other tasks so I can spend more time on the ones that create revenue for the business. So a lot of us have found ourselves in the expense part of the business. If you are the fundi of the chair, you are the expense part of the business. But as an entrepreneur, you need to put yourself in the revenue side of the business. Yeah. So the Wait, revenue side of the business, <laughs> I'm not telling you this thing, it's because of experience, it has hit home. The revenue side of the business is customer. How do I get customers? What are the partnerships? It, maybe it could be, how do we design better chairs? That's the revenue hmm. side of the business. The expand, if you are the fund, you're in the expense side of the business. Yeah? Hey, washeke. One customer and then become the expense by being the fund. So I feel like telling you, the revenue side of the business yeah i feel like telling you yeah i'm almost saying amen but i just feel like telling you emu repeat that time please repeat it the revenue okay. and expense side right. so this is my point guys for your we the aim what we do even in the centronomy entrepreneur program and if this is hitting home for you please please we're going to put our details on screen about how you can join this program but to grow your business as an entrepreneur listen you are the one that god gave the idea god gave mm -hmm. the seed for that tree you've got to become a tree that has branches that has fruit you yeah. do you do that by being conscious and using your time and skills on the revenue side of the business who do i sell the chair to True. so the revenue side of the business could be you're looking for partnerships it could be your increasing designs of chairs because you've realized different customers want different designs. It could be your, your pitching to investors. Yeah. Those are the, that's the revenue side of the business. A lot of it is busy. We call it in, in, in corporate companies, they call this business development. Right. Yeah. And business development takes, you could be a graphic designer and you're a creative. So that creativity is what brings money through the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when we are, I'm the messenger of the business. I'm the debt collector of the business. I'm the fundi who makes the chairs. You're, you're spending your time being an expense in the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to be play a part in growing revenues, not, 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 the, not, not that you won't pay yourself, but mm -hmm. not spending time on the things that are sucking. They, are, they are necessary, but are you the best person to do it? You having that, you are too expensive to be the fundi. A lot of the times you are too expensive to be the fundi. Mm. Your time, your skills, your experience, your ideas is better being the person who gets customers. That's, that's just how we have to think as entrepreneurs. And a lot of the times money it. doesn't work because we are using our time on the wrong thing. So someone earlier was saying, how this is forcing them to stay home and think and totally rethink on the business. And I think it's Judy even said uh, she's working from home and this is the time to, to rethink. But now we have to rethink and look about ourselves and understand our value so that we can build revenue. So don't go back to be the fundi in your mm. business. It is better for your business for you to hire a fundi and then... Especially if you're not, if honestly speaking, you're not the best fundi, and then you focus on the customers or the designs or the investors. And I think all of us, this season is teaching us, we've got to think about our business are not small. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity for us to, Sheba, you talked about hibernation. May I talked mm -hmm. about cave, whatever cave or hibernation you're in, can we start thinking about businesses more than just a survival mechanism, mm -hmm. but a growth and mechanism, something that creates employment, something that creates true wealth for you as the entrepreneur. Right. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us, Wanja from UAE. She says being present with your income and expenditure yeah. is such a powerful statement. And yeah. what I'm also really learning from this is the importance of all of us as entrepreneurs, you could be entrepreneurs in your own business or in someone else's yeah. business, like I am with Washakes. Yeah. And the question is, how are you leveraging your energy and your time? Is it yeah. on the expense side or is it on the income side? Wow. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, Washeke, for that. And I'll, I'll move that comment beyond entrepreneurs because, Sheba, mm. this 
for me, this is a season where everybody has to become an entrepreneur doesn't necessarily mean you run your own business. An entrepreneur is the way you think. So even if you're here and somebody else has is paying you a salary, you've got to start thinking, how am I part of the revenue generation mechanism of this mm -hmm. company? Mm -hmm. That is where you have to place yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Kerubo, I'll just say being on the revenue side of the business simply means you're conscious about how your business makes money or the organization you work for makes money. And then you want to put yourself squarely on that side of the, of the, of the business. So in terms so, of your input. efforts, in terms of your, your efforts, efforts and your time. Yeah. So, 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 so that, so, so that's where we want to go. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Like so, and, and, <laughs> and so I like the question that, not even question, but let's look at Wamaida's situation earlier when she talked about having to go back to the parents' house, having to yeah. you know get back, uh, her office is now in one of the rooms at the building at home. And I'm thinking those are just many ways of what you usually call saving up or ex yeah. cutting down on your expenses. Yeah. What are some yeah. of the tips you have? Or yeah. What could you advise entrepreneurs right now? Because it's a reality. Some okay. expenses are not going away yeah. and yeah. money is still an issue. I'm just going to put up something that we've put up on screen before. This is on the personal side, but I just want to relate it to the business side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've before, and if, we, if you've joined us before, you've probably seen this before. Your expenses on your personal life, A, B, C. A meaning extremely essential, like food. B meaning they are important, but you can you can do without them if you had to, like driving a car, going to the gym, yeah? C are others. It's our entertainment. It's our luxury, subscription, going out, things like that. So in times when we have to make our money stretch, we've got to be clear what is A, what is B, and what is C. And what we want to keep going as far as possible is the A. So with the limited resources that many of us have found ourselves in, you want to do the A and maybe part of the B that are related to your bigger picture, yeah? So for example, if, if it's exercising, I'm still, I may not go to the gym, but I may go and run on the road because that's important for my bigger picture health, yeah? I may not be able to stop exercising for now. So as a business, that's the same principle you want to approach. What is the A in your business? And for a lot of us, it's things like salaries. Uh, for some of us, it may be even things like marketing. People think marketing is an expense that should go away. But depending on what kind of business you are in, marketing could still be a very essential expense. Yeah. Uh, B could be things like some people have found themselves paying rent and realizing they don't need the rent. Yeah. So that could be important, but right now it's not essential. And see why, you know, you are wasting pens, photocopying, blah, 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 all those things that you can completely have a, a different, you can use. So for a business, just focus on what are your A's or B's. I would say B's, the kind of B's that you may have to do are the ones that are going to put you in the right place, give you the correct landing page, mm. to, even as we come out of this COVID. So you also want to try not to, have said, I'm not going to spend absolutely anything. And then when we come out of it, you find now that you're delayed. You could, mm. if there were some things you could have done, like maybe building your profile on social media, yes. taking a course that, that, so that you don't repeat the same mistakes again, that mm. what, even as we come out of this, it positions you in the right thing. So under A is what do I need for my business to keep going? If it mm. needs to keep going. B, R, what are the expenses that I need to incur because I am a big picture person. I am a visionary person and I want to position myself in the right way, even mm. as we wait to see when we're, we're going to come out of this. Yeah. And, and Sheke, I'd just like to, to share with our yeah. people, uh, you know, everybody who is watching right now and even later, please just go back to the slide oh, again. Okay, sorry, and, yeah. and maybe in case you're taking some notes down, you could do this. Some of your A expenses, as Washeke has said, depending on the type of business, in A could be rent, depending on yeah. the type of business. Salaries 
um, could be in A as well. Telephone and internet for some businesses could be a key A because you know you still need to communicate with your clients. Probably if now you are an online business, you still need some Wi-Fi. Uh, medical insurance for some people, for yourself as the entrepreneur, and even yeah. now maybe for your people as well. Some of the B expenses that may fall under B could be things like legal fees. Yes, they are important, yes. but maybe not essential right now during this COVID season. Things like, you know, audit fees. These are some of the conversations you can have with your service providers and maybe, you know, see how you can stagger some of these payments. Things like um, office transport, you know, because now we've actually been, been almost in lockdown, even if it's not mm. full, you may not need to spend so much on transport at the moment. Um, some C expenses, we are not refusing, you know, business people. Yes, things like team building, they are very important. But mm. at the moment, you can afford, your business can afford to live without them at the moment. Mm. Mm. Things like client entertainment, you know, like in my business, we used to do a lot of client entertainment, but right now it's a C. You know, yeah. we cannot we, we cannot spend on that. Um, and even some company events, maybe the, when you used to have, you know, going to trips or going for drinks or doing certain things with the people. So it's up to you. You know, there is no like one, uh, what can I say, one template yes. for each business. Yes. It's yes. up to you to go and see which one is essential, which one is important, not essential, and which one can we really do without at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sheba. Yeah. Sheba, maybe you want to put up the slide so we can explain also what the Centronomy Entrepreneur sure. Program does yes, yes. before we end. But as Sheba is putting up that slide, I'll just, this will be a totally separate topic in the Making Sense Conversations, how to pay yourself and the subject of paying yourself as entrepreneurs. But I just want to emphasize because of what we have talked about and because of what people are actually going through, you should design your business so that it pays you. First of all, you get a very healthy separation between you and your business. We cannot keep operating in this Kianyeji financial life of the business account is my personal account and my personal account is my business account. So even you, your business should be paying you to cover your personal A and B. And hopefully as the business continues growing, C expenses. So it covers your food. So, you know, every month my business is paying me 50,000 shillings. Business is paying me 30,000 shillings. My business is paying me 100,000 shillings. That way you also don't get indisciplined. A lot of you are paying yourselves, but because it's all over the place, you're just doing it in a very ad hoc matter, which will also get you into, into tax mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. It is also very important to pay yourself because if you don't pay yourself that 50K, Imagine the day you need to pay somebody else the right talent for your business, 100,000 shillings. You'll be like, no, it's too much. And that's another reason why, why, why our businesses don't grow. So you are providing value to that business. Remember I said you are on the revenue side of that business and it is only fair to you to compensate yourself as your business grows. Even if you start today with 10,000, even you start today, if you have a mind block because of tax, start with 24,000, then you're not going to be taxed at all. But at <laughs> least, yeah, at okay. least it gets you thinking about what you are coming out of this with, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I'll come back to uh, the personal finance side for entrepreneurs in a minute. Let me just let share her, take you through the autonomy Entrepreneur class mm -hmm. uh, that's that walks this journey with you yeah yeah thank you so much Washeke. and i just can't wait for everybody who's going to to join us during this online now we are online so you can tune in from wherever you are at in in this country and even beyond and what we are saying is by the time you are through with the 14 weeks you'll be able to just really understand what your role is um as an entrepreneur in your business. Many of us just started businesses, as I had given an example like for myself, to make things work or to just meet our expenses and things like that. But then again, how are you able, this session, this training is going to enable you to connect yourself, your heart with Mm. your business and that's why like the first three modules in fact yes the first three modules really focus on you because how are you gonna run a, a thriving 
business, what we call dynasty, not only for yourself, but everyone else that comes behind you, if the heart part of the business is not taken care of. And then, you know, many of our clients and even you, as you're telling us here, structure is usually an issue. You know, eh, much has to do with strategy. People are like, so how can I write a strategic plan? And here we usually say, it's not so much about show me how to uh, start the best strategic plan to use, but how do you make sure you align your strategy where your business is going to even what you're doing right now. We get to talk about marketing, digital marketing, and all the financial aspects about the business that you as an entrepreneur need to be able to understand so that now, even as you're bringing on board professionals to support you now or eventually, you even know what you're expecting from them. Well, Sheke, one of the things I learned mm. in my business is do you know by the time I was getting a lawyer to help me yeah. in a couple of issues, taxes, getting book, doing bookkeeping, I didn't know how it was aligned. I didn't know what to expect. So sometimes there are people who can easily take you for a ride because you yeah. don't know what you're supposed to be asking them for. And yeah. then by the end of this all, uh, all of it all, we are talking about being an abundant entrepreneur, yeah. how you free yourself from just right creating a business that is more driven for what can i say give me money give me money but how can you make sure yes you're earning revenues but you're also impacting your clients and even above and beyond and yeah. it's 14 weeks every single week you get to invest three hours of your life every single week and this is the ideal time for you and so we, you're welcome you can choose which class you want either tuesday saturday and wednesday and because now we are online if you feel like you attended tuesday class in the morning and you're like there's a concept i'd like to repeat you're welcome to attend any other class and right now we are offering a 20 percent what we call lockdown discount and you're able to pay it in these uh, very flexible installments um, and just free, feel free to just call Ruby, email Ruby, tell her, you know what, this is what I saw. I had Washek and Sheba talking about this. How can I plug in? And all I can say, this is the ideal time for you to invest in your business, invest in your time and just start thinking about how to adjust and, and, mm. and rethink how to handle business during this time, Washek. Okay, all right. So as, as Sheba said, that's that's what we're taking you through for it's three hours of your time. It's 15,000 shillings per month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can't make the time investment, please, please. It's it's I we firmly, firmly, firmly believe that it's the time for businesses in Africa to go beyond just survival because a lot of us are sitting on gold but we haven't realized that it is gold and we have to stretch ourselves a bit more um we've been talking about money today and let's talk about you and the entrepreneur the personal money because even i ended by saying you must pay yourself we have learned as entrepreneurs the painful lesson of not even having a personal reserve for yourself. Mm -hmm. This is because you don't pay yourself money properly, yeah? So we want you also, as you're building this business to ensure that you are also creating wealth in the process. There's money there for you to save. There's money that if things go wrong in the business, you can survive three months and you can also create wealth because at the end of the day, the Centronomy Entrepreneur makes sure that your business becomes a tool that can create wealth for you. But the onus is also on you as that is happening to start figuring out what, just because you, you're an entrepreneur does not mean personal finance does not apply to you. Mm. So even as we go through this, this season and you want to figure out how do I start thinking, because once you start thinking about your personal finance, what you also need for your personal life, you will start also understanding what you need to make your business do. So in the meantime, please reach out and get the book, Making Sense. Um, you can get it on the following. This book is a, is a tool. It will help you work through personal finance in a very easy way because we do it through stories. I told you my 200 Bob ATM story. The full story is actually in the book and what happened step by step as a result of that. But it's, I'm not the only person you'll encounter in the book. It's people just like you. Some entrepreneurs, some of them who've been, uh, who, are, who are working for other organizations who and how they've turned this journey with money to make, to make, uh, to make them wealthy. 
so and financially empowered and financially free, not just in the bank account, but also in their minds as we were talking about earlier. So you can get the book by calling that number. A lovely lady called Beth will answer that phone and get the book delivered to you. All our delivery partners are taking the necessary precautions. You can get it online. I know where people, we've, people have tuned in from all over the world on Amazon. It is available on Amazon. And even if you're here in Kenya, you can get it at Rafu Books. And also these are the bookshops in case you do happen to be walking around and can stop by Bookstop, Africa Book Hub, Book Hub Prestige. But please do get the book and please continue working through, even as you hibernate, even if you're having, even if you're going to work, spend this time doing something for you, not just, mm -hmm. not just surviving. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you, Sheba, again for coming and as always My giving pleasure. us your amazing experiences. Thank Can't you guys for, for listening. Next week. Thank you to the Centonomy team behind the scenes. Yeah. And we'll see you again on the Making Sense Conversations next week. Um, yeah. I think we will also put up details of how to register uh, in the class on on the on the Facebook chat, mm -hmm. but. I hope this was of value for you and a good start to the weekend for you. So stay safe and we'll see you next time. Bye.